Right, folks, as we said, we're talking, talking assist hooks. We're talking slow pitch or jigs today. Here I've got two jigs with me now. They're both uh, Savage Gear jigs. They're both 60 gram, very good brand. Uh, currently selling at Trophy Tackle, then I think in the region of about 110 bucks, 110 rand per jig. But what we're doing today is um, the 60 gram is quite a small jig and the Savage Gear hooks that come on it are quite, quite large. So nothing wrong with these, but what we're going to do today is remove those and I can use them as spare to when we get to any of the other jigs. And I'm going to build myself two brand new assist hooks using these uh, Eagle Claw live bait hooks. So here we go, what do we need? Inside there have a small tape measure which I also have a boily hook, a number of different darning needles but today I'll probably only be using the, uh, this little freshwater boily needle. Then I've got HMP um, hollow core braid. We're going to be using the 200 pound. Always have a good craft knife handy. Uh, you're going to need a split ring plier um, just to do the later finer work. Then I keep a decent pair of braid scissors just to do all the snipping and crimping. Then a cigarette lighter which always comes in handy to end off your knots and then a split ring or a solid ring. Then I always add a little bit of flashing inside here. Now I have a bit of the Maimar Mayamar uh, pearl and I also have some blue, uh, I can't remember, I think it was fish scale blue. I'm going to end off the whole thing with some, um, some heat shrink which we're going to put around the, the knot as well as on the flashing. And what you're going to end up with is something like this. Um, but let's take it. Right, so what we're going to do is start off with some of the hollow core Dacron. This is probably the hardest part of the whole operation um, and it just takes patience a little bit of time and uh, you're going to get the hang of it. Now I like to make mine a little bit longer than what they uh, necessarily need to be and that's just because the knots are quite clumsy and uh, in the final stages the little bit of extra length although the wastage is quite minimal certainly helps with the whole process. So what we've done here is we've simply taken the datrum and excuse my left hand I'm still battling with my uh, my shoulder up so I'll be a little bit restricted in my movement but what we're doing is we're taking the Dacron to more or less the length plus maybe one tenth or two, two tenths of what we need. We're folding it in half and then we're making quite a pronounced twist on the actual end where the Dacron is going to finally end up. We're taking out our braid scissor and now we're simply just cutting the Dacron strip. Okay, you can put the HMP hollow core braid away for a while. Here we go now, so we've got our two lengths. Dacron, at least hollow core braid. And now we're going to start the process of actually getting the center with our little hook. Now this little hook is quite fascinating. You can go and have a look at on the boiler hook. They have a little cage and a little lever which is mechanical. And that you want to point backwards and then start by feeding the center of the hook down the center braid. So I get to the spot where I actually made the, the fold in the Dacron and that fold indicates where I'm going to run this, uh, this loop up until. Okay so slowly we just keep feeding the uh, tool down the center of the Dacron and I'll have you, have you show now what it looks like. Uh, of course now that I'm on camera this one will be giving me all the hassle it needs but there you can see how we just keep filling the hollow core down the, down the shaft and you want to keep building it until you get to that fold. That fold is where your loop is going to be created and you're going to pull the rest of this hollow core down the center of the, of the other braid. In other words you're going to give it a Chinese bangle I suppose that's a good way. You can see how I just keep going here. It's almost there now you can see the fold just coming up into the picture. We'll keep adding it on and just scrunch it backwards on your tool as you go. Right, there we go. We've now reached that area. I'm going to puncture the actual clasp through the side of the of the uh, hollow core and then I'm going to loop in the tailpiece. So I'm going to bring it into here, pulling back 
and then I'm going to flip that mechanical arm over. I'll come and show you what it's going to look like now. So it has a loop at the end. Now I've put that mechanical arm over and I'm now going to pull that back through so that the other wrapping goes right over it. Let's show how that's done. Right, and here we go. You can see our loop has started to be formed. The loop has started to be formed. Bearing in mind that Dacron is now going inside the, 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 the other hollow core. So we're getting a double wrap essentially. I'm just going to keep pulling that through until you can see where it's come out. So basically it's come out now and there our loop is formed. I can now take off the that and we're finished with that. We're going to get our eye to more or less the size we want it, which you can see is right there. Okay. And then we're going to pinch that and then just simply slide back on the deck run. Okay, so there we go. We now have a double wall section of Dacron. In other words, the one piece goes down the center of the other hollow tube. So we started there, it runs out now, and at the end the single is just sticking out. So that is that is where we are up to now. That is going to form the basis of how we actually now attach the hook. Now, as I mentioned on the hook, I like to find a hook that's uh, normally a short-ish shank. For some reason that seems the shortest shanked hooks are the ones that do most of the hookups. I like a nice sturdy hook because sometimes you never know what you're going to be hooking when you're doing this vertical jigging or slow pitch jigging. In this case here, this is the Eagle Claw live bait pattern. Um, and what I really really like about this, I mentioned keeping hooks sharp, is that it's a nice thick gauge hook, which means that you can sharpen this with a little diamond file on the boat. Right, let's get into our next part as we build that section up. Right, so this might be a bit tricky with one arm, but uh, let's see how we go. Right, you remember we got this far where we made our single Dacron uh, basically body for the assist hook. It consists of a hollow core braid, HMP hollow core braid, 200 pound. I fed the one through the channel in the center of the, of the other, making it double sided now. And that was what gave me the loop, which I will use to attach to either a split ring or directly onto the lure. What it leaves us now is the tag end here, which we're going to tie a knot, which secures us onto our hook. Remember our choice of hook? These little uh, eagle claw live bait hooks are very short, uh, short shaft. They're quite a nice, they're probably a times two hook. And they don't have an aggressively sharpened, chemically sharpened point, which means that in an emergency, if you don't have spares on the boat, you can file these and continue fishing if you pick up a burr or something. Remember folks, a clean, sharp hook. Make sure that you land, whoops, make sure that you land your trophy fish. Now, the knot I like to use is simply a looped figure eight or clinch knot, which I tie down the shaft quite simply by lining the, the uh, hook more or less to the length that I want to create my length for the actual drop on the assist hook. Then I make a loop which uh, starts with the basis of the, of the knot and it basically looks just like that. And then I go through that loop twice. So I said I'm a bit cack handed folks. I've got a brace on this left hand of mine and I am left handed. So all I'm really doing here, I've got six weeks of sitting in this brace so I thought I would kill some time and see if I could put out some YouTube content in the meantime. Right, let's have a look here. So, my figure 8 is formed over the shaft of the hook. This is going to be the basis of all of our, of our assist hooks. Right, so let's just go ahead and tighten that up. And I'm going to show you our progress so far. There's no need to really get pliers involved. You can if you want. These things are like Chinese bangles. So the, the, the tighter it gets, the firmer the grip holds. There we can see so far the progress. So we've got now our Dacron loop, which we created. Remember, it is a hollow core braid, HMP. The one sleeve goes into the core of the other one, which creates that loop that you can see there. And then we've used a two-turn figure eight to attach that to the shaft of the hook. We can now go ahead and trim the back end of the tag piece here and then put a lighter on it, singe it down so that knot will never come loose. Right, 
let's quickly do that trimming. I mentioned earlier I like to carry a craft knife with me. I find that a bit easier than working with scissors. Um, and we're just going to cut off that tag. So you can see, although I was overly cautious, my wastage is relatively, relatively small. And I always say to the guys, when you're doing this kind of finicky work, rather start off with a bit too much than end off with a little bit too little. It's a good proverb to hold in your life. Right, let's chuck that away for the second. We're now going to bring out the lighter. So keep going, you lift quite a bit of that. And as it gets there, it isn't hot, folks. Just use your finger and mold it onto the... Now it stops what acts as a locker to that knot there. You can see that should in a million years never, ever come, come loose. Right, there we go. Let's just see if it'll show better with my hand. And that's where we are right now. Okay. Right now, what we can do now is prepare our flashing. And here I've got some of this, uh, this Maylar um, Mother of Pearl. And what I do with this is I just select a length. I fold that over. Okay. And so we've got a, just a folded over section. And I pinch the end so that it's ready. Coming back to the hook now, all we're going to do here is we're going to pull down on the knot. We're going to really pinch our double section and we're going to put it through from the back through the hook so that it starts looking like that. Okay, now in that loop there is what you're going to use to secure your flashing. Look, so we've got that piece of the mother of pearl which we folded double. Here again, awkward working with one hand. Put that through that little loop that we've created. I'll bring it up to the camera now so you can have a look. And we're going to more or less get down into the middle. Okay, I'm being a bit ambitious, folks. I did mention that I had a shoulder up two weeks ago, and uh, I'm not a guy that likes to sit still, so this is what I've been doing in the two weeks just to pass time and, and effort. Okay, so talking too much, I'm not showing you what I'm doing. So there it is all pulled tight now. We've got our, our flashing inside there and the knot is now through the front of the eye. Right, we're then going to cut ourselves a small section of heat shrink. Something like that will do. Okay, and just to give you the idea on the size, it just really needs to cover the eye of the hook and then secure the flashing. And we're going to attach this simply by going through the loop that we've created so that it looks like that now and then just carefully pull that over the eye of the hook now you remember that one uh, that one flashing was folded double so all i do there is take my scissor put it into the loop and snip it so that now you've got four little strands of flashing onto that onto that lure. all right let's have a look so far and there she goes right we're now going to just going to take our cigarette lighter and just pinch in behind your thumb just pinch in behind your thumb there i'll show you with my other hand the the flashing because what you don't want to do is singe it with the lighter that stuff is quite sensitive so what i do i'll do it with my left hand but in this case i'm working cack handed with this brace on so i'll quickly singe all that down quickly bring up the flame put it over the heat shrink We're ready to go. We're going to do his partner quickly. I've made the second assist hook already. Maybe two or three minutes without the camera. And there I'll put the two side by side. And you can see I made the one a little bit longer than the other. The longer one was the first one I did. The second one, the shorter, I just did off camera now. See, they're on a split ring. So all I'm going to simply do is get my splittering pliers quickly and if I can muster it quickly with my wrong hand all you want to do basically is break the ring with the pliers it's very easy to do slip the pliers through and then remove okay, and there they are what I'm going to simply do is put those into the packaging of this other Savage Gear jig that uh, I've always got to spare. Remember folks, sharp hooks 
never miss a fish and make sure you land your trophy catch. Then I'm going to use a split ring now. I don't have any solid rings. If I had them, I would use solid rings, but I'm going to use a split ring quickly and then just add both of these hooks onto the split ring. Right, I'll just go through and do the one at a time. Right, so there is the one ring basically put through the loop. You can see what that looks like so far. I'm not just going to add the second one. And I'll show you how we attach that to the actual jig. Right, there we go, folks. Both assist hooks now neatly on the split ring. And uh, I'll do another little tutorial down the line to show you how to do one where you include a solid metal ring into that loop. Right, coming back to our jig now, exactly the same thing happens. We have a split ring existing on here. What I like to do though is put it now onto the solid, the solid ring of the, of the jig. So that just keeps your lure clip and your line or your knot that connects your jig to your terminal tackle completely clear of any of the hardware that's on the jig. You attach it and how you do your setup is uh, entirely up to you. I'm just basing on what I did and my experience is mainly estuary so you know what do I know about offshore but what I do know is that lots of fish are very keen to eat these jigs and these little assist hooks make the world of difference. There we go folks. One Savage Lure 60 gram jig fitted with two assist hooks with a bit of Neymar flashing at the end there and those assist hooks are 1-0 Eagle Claw live bait hooks. Keep them sharp, keep 